We've seen plenty of mining underneath special areas, underneath water catchment areas. Uh, we know that there has been uh, fracturing. We know that there's been attempts to uh, mend some of those areas, but this being knocked back is a very significant one. I'll just take you back to some of the stories we've been doing on this over the last couple of years, uh, one of which on uh, ABC uh, Online says that Blue Scope Steel tells the IPC that South Coast Mines expansion is critical to its survival and critical to the whole South Coast economy. Uh, South 32, in another story by Kelly Fuller, warned that the Port Kembla Steelworks themselves were at risk without the coal mine expansion being approved. Well, it has been knocked back. I wonder if you're related to the mine, if you're connected to the mine, perhaps a worker, uh, or perhaps just a member of the Illawarra who's concerned about the economy, you might have your views, you may have an environmental view, and you might be cheering. We've spoken to a few environment, environmentalists this morning who cannot believe that it's happened uh, and are shaking with glee about it. Uh, we have, of course, uh, contacted uh, the mine's owner, South 32, to get their reaction. The union uh, absorbing us, as I mentioned, this only came through about half an hour ago, uh, and hopefully they'll speak to us soon or perhaps on the drive program. In the meantime, Georgina Woods, spokesperson for Lock the Gate, is with us. G'day, Georgina. How are you going? Yeah, good morning. How are you? What's your reaction at this early stage? Well, it, it is uh, pleasantly surprising. Um, it is the right decision because this mine has already done considerable damage to the drinking water catchment of Sydney and the Illawarra, and the expansion was going to do um, much, much more damage, described as unprecedented, um, by Water New South Wales, which manages the catchment. Unfortunately, South 32 weren't really very responsive to the concerns that were being raised about the damage that this extension would cause uh, and didn't really take the trouble to amend their mine plan um, and, and respond to the, the very real problems that this mine um, was going to inflict. They did offer uh, a lot of money in potential compensation uh, for any potential water loss. I think it was something in the order of $100 million. Why do you think that was not enough? Well, it doesn't really make sense that money can replace water in a fundamental sense. I mean, this is the catchment. It has a function. It, it captures water and feeds it into the dams that people rely on for their drinking water. And so losing water from those dams, losing the swamps that filter and release the water um, above the dams is going to do lasting damage. And you can't compensate for that with money. You need integrity of the catchment for a growing city like Sydney and for the Illawarra. Are you saying that no amount of money would compensate for the loss of water in this uh, special, I mean, it's literally called special areas? Yeah, they're called special areas and they're managed quite closely and intensively by Water New South Wales for the good of the city and, and the Illawarra. And, of course, money can't compensate for damage done to that in the long term, you know, that compromises the water security um, of the population. I mean, that's the fundamental issue here. Uh, we can't replace money, water with money. Uh, there has already been a great deal of damage done by dendrobium and lots of concerns were raised by the independent scientific panel and by Water New South Wales that really the, the damage that was going to be inflicted by this particular expansion was of a scale much, much greater than we've seen so far. And the IPC decided that, you know, on, on balance, it, it just wasn't worth inflicting that harm. Mm. Well, just talking about harm, it, it seems it's, it comes down to environmental harm versus economic harm. Uh, the manager of the mine, Jason Economides, said that the entire South Coast economy depended on the proposed plan. Uh, the whole Blue Scope facilities are uh, at risk if this mine doesn't expand. Uh, are you comfortable with uh, this balance between the environmental and the economic? Well, like I said, it really is on South 32 um, to have put forward a proposal that's environmentally irresponsible and then, you know, put the IPC into a position where there's such enormous... Um, things at stake on both sides, you know, and they had to make the call that was based on the well-being of the community and the water supply. Really, I think we're in a position now where we can't afford to base our economies on on environmental degradation. You know, we have to have industry planning that 
assumes we can have a functioning catchment and ecological integrity in that catchment, that we're not driving dangerous climate change, mm. but we can provide sustainable jobs in the long term. I mean, that's on the New South Wales government. That's on Rob Stokes, Gladys Berejiklian, to, to ensure that our industrial regions have planning that can uh, function within the environment and not put at risk the very basis of you know our community's well-being. Mm. Uh, I'm looking at the conclusions of the Commission's finding here and they talk about the mine design is the primary determinant of impact for the project and the mine is a long wall uh, which part of its design is it causes the, uh, the ground above to crack. We have seen other mines move from that design to board and pillar, the old fashioned way where you hold up the seam. Uh, if they went back to the drawing board, might that be the way they could expand this mine? Well, it could well be. And I, mean, I think exploring other options is something South 32 really failed to do. So they've failed their workforce and they've failed the community of the Illawarra by you know, belligerently continuing with a uh, mine design proposal that they, it was clear um, that the experts and the catchment managers thought was unacceptable. So you know, they should go back to the drawing board. And people talk about how long mining has been occurring in, in the catchment area, and it has. But in the past, it was mining of a very different kind uh, and really wide long walls mm. underneath the swamps that filter and release the clean water that all of us enjoy um, do damage. We've seen it happen already and we simply can't afford to continue, you know, eating away um, at the basis of our well-being, our, our, our clean water, our clean skies, our stable climate. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Georgina. Good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. That's Georgina Wood, spokesperson for Lock the Gate. Uh, I just want to reiterate that we have asked for a statement from South 32. We have also uh, asked for a reaction from uh, Blue Scope Steel about whether this really does put their entire supply chain uh, at risk and the uh, entire plant at risk as claimed by South 32. Uh, we've also asked for a statement from the union this morning, but uh, so far they're just absorbing this news. Some of the reasons that uh, this mine were knocked back, I'll just go through the headlines here in the conclusion. The, the mine design itself, as I mentioned, subsidence and cracking, groundwater, uh, surface water, biodiversity and upland swamps, its impact on cultural heritage. Uh, and here's the interesting thing with economic considerations. The dependence of Blue Scope on Wongawili seam coal from the Dendrobium mine is unclear given that an alternative source of coal would need to be found after the proposed cessation of long wall coal mining at Dendrobium at 2024, even if the project was approved. Uh, the project would have beneficial economic impacts, but these impacts do not sufficiently outweigh the adverse environmental and other impacts of the project. Uh, you, that is public document if you want to have a look at it on the Independent Planning Commission.